Hello, welcome, and my name is Tim, and welcome to the Workshop Box Shop. Now today, I'm gonna to teach you on how I sharpen a plane blade. Um, it's a very simple process, there's a few easy steps to do, and I'm gonna talk you through it step by step on how I get a very high quality edge on a plane blade. Hello, so we're gonna teach you a, a little bit about the basic stuff that I use to sharpen. So I'm just gonna run through my selection of sharpening gear. Um, so obviously, as you can see in the center there, we've got some uh, Shapton sharpening stones. We've got our 2000, 6000 and our 16K uh, finishing stone. That's obviously um, the highest grit I go up to. We've got ourselves a nice thin ruler there. Um, we've got ourselves a carry case for the stones to be put in. Now, my strop system as well, I've cut them all to size so it also fits in the carriage um, where we can sharpen. We have a trend diamond stone that is 1,000 and uh, uh, 300 grit. Uh, obviously, I use the 300 grit to flatten off my shaptons. We have uh, some selection of rubbing compounds there. Um, generally, I prefer the green rubbing compound. Um, I'll show you a little trick during the video, uh, mixing it with some Camilla oil, just to obviously water it down a little bit, break it down, uh, just so it's a little bit more, so it's higher than 16K. Uh, we've got some various um, honing guides there um, and some cloths. Now, the most important tool that we've got amongst all this is we have a depth stop. So basically, this depth stop is used to get... Um, some the the different increments between your, your secondary bevels on your plain blades um, so i'm going to talk you through on how we use this i would obviously recommend if you do use a honing guide um, this is definitely something that i would certainly make and i'll run you through um, obviously what happens when i have a blade protruding up against the stop there um, and we'll obviously i'll demonstrate that in a moment so depth stop let me just teach you on how we use a depth stop. So obviously the first thing we're gonna need is some type of honing guide. Now this is a Lee Nielsen, uh, but you can use uh, a cheaper version. Um, obviously with these, you probably would need a screwdriver just to tighten, this, tighten it up. But with a Lee Nielsen, you don't generally need a screwdriver. You can actually do it hand tight. So what we do is we put the blade in the honing guide uh, make sure the bevel is facing down um, along with the wheel and um, we're just going to tighten it up like so let's get that in there now we're going to leave it a little bit loose uh, just so the blade can move in this so it, it, it kind of moves and then what we're going to do now is we're going to select our degrees now, me, I can see there's a rather large bevel on this one. I generally know uh, this is sharpened to 35 degrees. So we are going to get our depth stop. Uh, we are going to set it to 35. So we're going to push it all the way up to 35. And then we're going to push the guide towards. So it's touching the, the very edge there. And then we're just going to tighten it up just so it bites. And then that there, if I was to set that on my stone, then that is 35 degrees. So basically, it always tells me, if I know I've set this, my secondary bevel to 35 degrees, I know each time I sharpen, I can always rely on this. So I can always reset that every time. Get that consistency going. Um... Some of my blades I do freehand, uh, some of my smaller ones, but generally on my larger plain blades, um, you know, I can free sharpen, but I'd like to use a um, honing guide just for that consistency, just to give me that nice crisp edge every time. And I'm going to demonstrate now on now that we've set this up what I do on my stones. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, so um, we have have uh, established the depth stop um, for 35 degrees with the honing guide. And what I'm gonna do now, generally some of these steps I do miss in general sharpening, it really does depend on how, how much the edge degrades. What I'd obviously recommend, if you can see that your secondary bevel 
um, is quite large, such as this one, then I would obviously run for all the steps because if you're going to go to a 2,000, I would rather go to a 1,000 um, and then obviously go from a 1,000 onwards. Um, generally, some of these steps can be missed if you have a tiny um, secondary bevel um, out, out in the end there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start with a 1,000 um, grit. Uh, this is the Trend Diamond Stone. So we're just going to add some water on there. Um, make sure that your nut on the side there is nice and stern. So, you know, so the blade doesn't slip. And um, what we're going to basically do, we're just going to even pressure. We're not going to put pressure on one side, then the other side. Um, generally, when I do do that on my finishing stone, I generally only do it uh, for the first three or four sharpenings. And then after that, I don't bother doing it because I generally strop my secondary bevel on the, on the strop. Um, and that does create s some type of... Um, curvature um, when I strop it at the end but what I'll do is I'll run you through that bit uh, towards the end and I'm going to get my 2000 uh, shapton now just going to add some water to that I just like to rub it in just to get it all over the stone there's no need to wipe so what we'll do now now the good thing about these shapton stones um, due to the swarf um, that it leaves behind you can actually see where where you're wearing on your blade now what we're generally looking for we're actually trying to fill for a little lip right out on the end there and you can just about hear it and we don't need to do a lot so what i mean once you go through all your grits especially starting from a thousand you'll find you have to do less work on each of your stones because you're going, you're basically grading it to the last stone. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this. Not putting much pressure at all. In fact, just demonstrating it, I'm not putting, so obviously to imagine um, maybe a, a piece of foam. Um, I'm hardly squeezing that, um, just so you can get a bit of an idea on how much pressure I'm actually putting on the blade itself. So we're just gonna carry on on this down. You'll probably find you probably have to pay more attention on your higher grit stones than your lower grit stones. But you can see all the swarf that we're getting off a 6,000 grit stone, which is, which is quite a lot. Um, so they're very, very abrasive stones. Now what I generally do now is between my 6,000 um, and my finishing stone, I'll just wipe the swarf off of it because uh, I don't want to contaminate my stone, I haven't really found much in cross-contamination. Um, but I know on some stones, um, cross-contamination can really make a difference. Um, on these shaptons, I don't really find it too much with, um, with ceramics. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to do some passes on my shapton stone now. Now, what I'm going to do now is obviously I am going to introduce a little bit more pressure on one side to the other. So I'm going to put pressure now on my right hand and I can tell that now by looking at the stone and now I'm going to put some pressure on my left hand and, and that's all I do. Now what we're going to do now is now we're going to take the blade out of the honing guide. We are now going to get the ruler and place the ruler on the edge of the stone. Uh, this is the David Worth Charles ruler trick. This is who I, I got the idea from. Um, obviously, I know that this probably was um, invented way before David Charles Worth, um, but that's where I learned it from. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the blade within about three, um, three mil of the edge of the stone there. Um, obviously, making sure the further away it is, um, the less of the, the back bevel it's going to introduce. You know, you're probably talking not even not even a degree, probably probably about 0.5 of, of a degree. And we're just going to do that just until you can actually feel the stone grabbing. Um, and what that means is when the stone grabs, you can actually feel it when you're moving the blade um, that it's actually taking off the the back burr, and now you're left with a very very sharp blade. What we're going to do now is now we're going to wipe the blade. 
um, obviously watching your fingers. And we're going to go on to another step now. Just obviously make this blade go to another level. Let's get rid of some of this out of the way. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce my strops. And this is generally what I use to take it up to another level. I'm also going to add some Camilla oil. So I'm going to bring some Camilla oil in. And then what I'm going to do is charge, charge up one of my strops. I'm going to add some squirts of Camilla oil. I'm going to rub it on my strop. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to find the secondary bevel, and we're going to we're going to work, do a few of these on there. And you can put it in the holder if you want. I generally say just be a little bit careful because your your thumb is in close proximity to the edge of the cutting, so just be a little bit careful. Obviously, I've got a bit of experience at this. But just be be careful, you know, you are sharpening a blade, essentially. I'm just going to do it a few more times. So basically what we're doing now is, as you can see, really and truly, because we're on a strop, um, you're actually creating a nice, um, a nice round over, okay? Because uh, obviously we do want some kind of minute curvature anyway. So I would say, generally, I would sharpen this blade about sort of four or five times um, and I'll obviously introduce pressure to one side pressure to the other but it will get to a stage in its sharpening where I won't bother doing that um, I could probably go about five or six times without even doing it and then I'll just generally just sharpen it with even pressure on my stones um, and then at the end I'll just go on a strop um, now what we're going to do we're not going to use the strop now because if I use the strop what it's going to do is going to round over those nice corners that we've put on um, with the ruler and I'm just going to go now to a normal um, a, a strop with just a normal piece of lever on it and I'm just going to run it over over the back and right there we have an incredibly sharp blade as you can see I've got some here on my arm but not much there we go as you can see, I can take the hair off. And I've got to be very careful because I've literally a tiny little nick on myself. It just shows you how sharp that is. Um, so if you obviously want to imply these tricks, feel free. I would say this is my way of sharpening. Um, if you feel that you're not getting the same results from me, um, obviously everybody has their own method don't take my sharpening as the only way to do it there is plenty of ways to sharpen okay I'd just like to thank everybody um, who stayed and, and, and watched this video um, take sharpening with a pinch of salt it's not necessarily my way might not work for you but give it a go put some comments down below show me your results now I've been obviously sharpening for quite some time and this method actually works for me. I would certainly recommend using some Camilla oil, especially on your, your strop that you charge. Um, you will actually see a significant difference in your sharpening. So that is definitely a must. Um, I'd like to thank you all again for thank all the subscribers. Um, I would love some more subscribers. Obviously, you know, I've only been doing this for a few months now. So please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Um, hopefully we'll bring you some more 4K footage soon because I'm currently getting a new camera for myself. Um, so you can obviously see my work in a, a little bit more higher definition. Um, so I shall say goodbye and I'll see you all on the next one.